All right, Kathy, you need to mute everybody who's no. not. Michael and I are doing that, Lou. Okay, you let me know when you're ready. When I click down here, I get a whole list of things I can do. Hmm. How about a picture? We have any they, No, they, no video. They said. That's why they're muting everybody. <laughs> okay, we're live on YouTube. Thank you. All right, thank you, Michael. Um, good afternoon, everyone. We'd like to welcome you to our Huber Lake um, sewer meeting. Um, we're holding this meeting, obviously, on Zoom for, for health reasons. Um, so what we're doing is right now, everybody is muted. Um, somewhere on your screen, I think if you're using an iPad on the upper right-hand corner, there is a control that lets you, it says, raise your hand. So we're going to explain what we're doing short, in a short, short little presentation. Afterwards, um, we're going to ask you for questions. You press the little button that says raise your hand. Uh, Michael or Kathy will see you and in the order the hands are raised. You ask your questions, uh, either myself, Rich, John Yakimic, Kevin Boswell, Mayor Schwager, Councilman Biali, or uh, Giselle Diaz from Boswell. We'll do our very best to answer your questions. And hopefully um, when we're done, everybody's gonna know everything we know. Um, if anybody has any questions, you can certainly call Borough Hall if you don't know how to do the raise your hand thing. Uh, and Michael can give you the instructions. So we, we're holding this meeting today because as everybody knows, we're planning on putting a pump station uh, on the property over at uh, Lakeside and Wilson that the borough has foreclosed on. Um, so the first thing and the most important thing to remember is that property is not connected to the pond or the lake physically. There is actually land that goes in between the pond and the property that the borough owns. Um, geographically, there's, a, there's a, a volleyball net out there and, and somewhere about five or eight, 10 feet to the inside uh, of the pole closest to the water, that's where the prop, the back property line of the borough property is. So that's number one. Um, Kevin, if you would put up picture number four, or uh, whatever it is, slide number four, uh, just so we can give everybody an overview. Um, we're gonna show you all right now an existing, our existing sewer system, which basically services and in, in, for your for your perspective, approximately sixty eight homes. It's the one um, before that. No, this uh, no, that not this one. The other one. The one before that, Mike. That's that that one. one. Perfect. Um, so the area in blue, the area in red, all those homes are going to that Hillbrook piece uh, pumping station which then goes into the Skyview Highbrook sewage treatment plant. And that's, that, that sewage treat STP, that's the most important thing here. So all of those, all of those properties and those three squares go to that sewage treatment plant, which is basically a sewage treatment plant is a very, for lack of a better explanation, a very esoteric community septic system. Um, they're there because when those houses were built and they tried to put septics in, uh, they couldn't. The ground, the ground and the percolation will not support a septic system. So this is the system they came up with. It's actually a little bit more intricate. There's there's another pumping station uh, up higher, and there's another pumping station actually on Lakeside Boulevard already, a small one. Um, but when this Skyview Hilltop sewage treatment plant treats the effluent, it goes via the aquifer into Huber Lake. So what's happening now is these sewage treatment plants are old. Um, because they're old, they're starting to fail. So we are going to eliminate them and we're gonna convert them over into an actual sewer system. So instead of the effluent from all of those houses going into Huber Lake, it is now gonna go into the proposed pump station, which is the small green dot uh, down towards the uh, left-hand side of your screen. That's, that, that green dot is located on the upper portion of the borough's property on Lakes, of the borough's foreclosing property 
on Lakeside Boulevard. Uh, the water will go into that into that facility. It will exit, and this is all underground, by the way. It will continue down Lakeside Boulevard to Franklin Avenue. It will hang a left turn on Franklin Avenue. This unit will help pump the material up to the top of Franklin until it can get to become a, what's called a gravity main or gravity feed. And then it will find its way over to the Bergen County Utility Authority over in Waldwick, New Jersey. So the minute that pump station goes online, Huber Lake is going to be receiving a lot less effluent. So you're gonna see almost an instantaneous increase in the water quality to Huber Lake. Um, and obviously we're gonna get rid of all these facilities that are no longer working, you know, that are starting to fail out on us. So that's the overview. So some of the questions that we've been asked are, well, why are you putting the pumping station there? Unfortunately, it's the only place that we have to put it. Um, there is a small pump station actually over on an upper portion of Lakeside Boulevard, except because of the geography there, it's, it's on such a small footprint, we can't do the things that we need to do to, to have a facility that we wanna have, you know, of the quality that we wanna have. Um, we can't put a, a generator there, which the facility that's going on Lakeside on the Huber Lake property is going to have. So we're very limited. And then of course our proximity to Franklin Lakes also limits our ability as to where we're going to put this. So this, this is the only place to put it. Um, but as I said, there's gonna be an instantaneous increase uh, in the quality of water. Um, the facility, and I think if any of you have gone there, and I know the one people that I've talked to have, um, John Yakimic from Boswell and I went up there one day, we staked out the, the outside footprint of the facility. And Kevin, if you could bring up that aerial view, or Giselle, um, of, the, of the aerial view of the, of the lot and the fence, please. Pretty please. That one, thank you. So if everybody looks, um, you'll see a, a green or a yellow line. That line represents the fence. The, the, the little broken ends of it represent the gate. Underneath it is a driveway going out to Lakeside. And the small brown square is an 11 by 15 generator building. Um, and that building's only function is to house a, a very, very quiet emergency generator. Um, off to the left side of that, um, there's a bit, there's a sort of like a, you know, a, a bigger open space. That is actually where the pump is gonna go, but the pump will be underground. So you will not see it, you will not hear it. Um, the reason the generator is there is, should there ever be a power failure, the generator will kick on and it will run the pump until power is restored. Uh, the entire, you know, because the entire function of that building is to house the generator, it is, it is, the walls are very quiet. I am told that you would probably have to be leaning against the building, which by the way, you shouldn't do because there's a fence around it. Um, but if you're leaning against the building, you might hear it come on and off once in a while. Most likely the answer is no. Um, the pump will run like anybody else's house generator. It'll run approximately once a week. It'll cycle itself, make sure that it's working properly, and then it'll shut back off. Um, I know that some people have expressed some safety concerns. And, you know, as far as what happens if there is an electrical power failure or if, if there's a, a, a situation at the pump station, and there are, there are monitors in there. And for example, if the material starts to rise and the jet and the pump does not kick off for any reason, our DPW will get an alarm and they will be up there very quickly to assess the situation and take whatever action is needed to, to facilitate the, the operation running as it's supposed to. Um, one of the other questions that I know that we that John Yakimic and I were asked when we were there is are any trees going to have to come down uh, along Lakeside? Um, I would tell you that at worst, maybe one, but we but we think that we can adjust the position of the driveway um, 
and we may just have to trim some trees so that we can get equipment in there if we when, when and if we need to. So we're going to really try and, and leave that that frontage uh, as intact as humanly possible. Um, but what you're looking at is the entire footprint. That yellow that yellow square is the entire footprint of the facility. Um, I will also tell everybody that. When we are done with this, and this is what we're calling phase one of our sewer plan, it's, it's taking those, those failing treatment plants that we have, getting them offline and going to a more, a more proper sewer system. Um, the houses along Lakeside that are running up and down this, this, this main that we're putting in will be the only properties in town that when and if we get the rest of our sewer program approved by the DEP and by the Highlands, these will be the only properties that already have the necessary infrastructure to receive, to convert to sewers, if that's what these houses want to do. Um, I will ask Kevin or Giselle or John Yakimic at some point, just to give you an idea of the construction timeline, um, because during that period, you know, obviously we're going to use that property. Um, there's going to be equipment on there. Um, there's going to be, you know, there were, it's going to be what's called a lay down yard. Um, equipment's going to be parked there overnight. Materials are going to be delivered there. Um, when we leave, however, uh, it is our intent to actually convert the rest of that property into a park. Um, and I, I wish I could take credit for the idea, but I was actually speaking to uh, Colleen O'Keefe and uh, Barbara uh, Steinfield, I believe. I, Forget the last name, and I apologize, Barbara, if you're there. But we were talking, and then John Yakimic was there from Boswell. One of them said, "Well, what are you going to do with the property?" I said, "Well, we're going to fix it up and make it, you know, put it back the way it was." And somebody said, "Hey, why don't you put a park there?" So I reached out to our environmental commission. Um, one of the chairs lives at the top of Huber Lake, and they are already starting to get the wheels spinning on how we can turn this into a nice open space park. So. Um, that's one of the things you guys have to look for. Um, I think at this point, I want to ask, um, we have Mayor Schwager with us, Councilman Bialy, as I mentioned, Kevin Boswell from Boswell Engineering, Rich Kuntz, our borough engineer, uh, Giselle Diaz from Boswell Engineering, and John Yakimic from Boswell Engineering. So, um, Michael or uh, Kathy, I'd like to open up right now to the rest of the team from the Oakland, if anybody has anything they'd like to add. Ah, thank you, Kevin. By the way, this is the schematic of the building. So it's basically going to be uh, 14, 15 feet across the front, approximately 11 feet deep. And although this doesn't show it, the overall height to the peak of the roof is going to be a maximum of about 12 feet. Um, so it's a shed. It's going to look like it's got clabbered on the outside. It's going to look like it's got shingles on top. And then, as I said, we're going to surround it with a fence. Um, and I know a lot of people did not like the idea of a chain link fence. So there is no more chain link fence. We're going to do a, uh, a black powder coat metal fence. Uh, we're looking for input from everybody, whether they would like it to be a six foot fence or an eight foot fence. And I guess I would tell you if it is an eight foot fence, we can even do the tops that. Uh, can turn in or turn out, you know, we can put some kind of decorative top on it. And then we're going to finish this whole thing off with uh, probably green giant arborvitaes going around at least three sides of it, the uh, left, right, and the rear. Uh, I'm not sure about the front for security purposes yet. Uh, and now I'd like to open it up to our team for any questions. Uh, the only thing I, thank you, Lou. The only thing I'd add is, um, this, the proposed pump station is something that exists throughout the, the entire area now. Uh, we, have, we have two operating now that would be decommissioned because of site constraint issues. And uh, they, they are, they're, rel they're, you, you, they're, they're everywhere. Uh, there, it's a very common thing. This is not a treatment plant. Uh, the pump station itself is underground. Uh, it's in a wet well, we call it, which is six feet in diameter and about nine feet deep. Uh, the controls are 
they can either be alongside that, or in this case, we put them inside the the uh, the shed because it they just, it's just easier to do it that way. And the generator is in there, and that's it. Uh, there's the uh, the operator of the pump station checks it daily, files a log, and um, it it uh, is a very reliable way of dealing with uh, sanitary sewer effluent. It's it's a regular um, run of the mill type of installation. Uh, there's no noise, as as Lou said. There's no odor. There's no nothing. It's uh, it's very it's it's very common. I can I could probably name 20 locations that have them right now, and you you could see some of them with and without sheds. Uh, so I would just comment that this is a uh, a not it's not a sewer plant. It's not a large intensive use of this property. It is a subsurface pump station and a shed with ancillary controls and a generator. That's it. Mayor, Councilman Biala, do you have anything you want to add? I think, um, first of all, thank you to everybody. Lou, you, um, thank you for organizing and Kevin and company. Thank you for doing this. Um, we are open to any questions. It really is going to be very nice. I lived on Walnut Street before uh, in my first house in Oakland. And my I live next to one of these, uh, they look like little houses. And, I, and I've been driving past it recently ever since the issue of Yuba Lake brought up. And it's, go on, go on um, Walnut Street. It's really not bad. You, 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 will, you will like it. And it's gonna be very helpful. I think the, I think the big thing, if I might add, Mayor, is that what, when we're done, that property, we're we're going to improve the property for everybody's purposes. For the residents who live there, we're going to make it like I say, green, an open space type of park. Um, so you're going to have someplace nice. We certainly are going to talk to our shade tree commission about making this one of our planting locations um, for the replacement trees from our shade tree uh, permitting program. So we we've got we've got high plans for this piece of property as far as improving it for everybody's benefit. Um, John, do you have anything you want to add? Yes, I, I just want to make it perfectly clear that the main subject matter we're dealing with is eliminating the process of treating sewage. That's what's going away. We're no longer going to have a standing sewage location where it's being treated to uh, break it down. This is all going to be pumped out of the area and down into Waldwick through our series of a pumping station and getting it down gravity feed down to ramp uh, to, down to Franklin Avenue and over to Waldwick where it will be treated. So we're used to having the treatment uh, in these three facilities that we have. We're used to having those uh, facilities treat the sewage. Now we're just moving the sewage. We're just moving it out of the area and into Waldwick. I just want everyone to understand there will be no more treatment plants in Oakland when we're finished with, with all of the three decommissionings. Um, Giselle or Kevin, just quick question. If I can ask the first question, what do we expect the construction duration? How long are we gonna be occupying that property for the executory interval of construction? Um, six months maximum. Uh, the, the, what takes long, frankly, is, is the installation of the uh, uh, of the gravity sewer. The pump station itself is probably a two, two and a half month process, but the installation of the uh, gravity lines that, that are going to allow the decommissioning of the treatment plant and the other two pump stations also requires another couple of months. And then you just allow another month or two for the weather and time of year and things of that nature. Okay. Um, let's open it up to the public then. Let's say anybody else has something from our team. Rich? No, I'm good. John? You okay, Mick? Okay. Let's open it up to the public and anybody have any questions? Hold on, Lou. I'm doing it. I thought, I, I thought we did such a great job. Nobody had any questions. I unmuted Linda. 
Hello, my name is Linda Arnell. I'm on Beach Street. Um, obviously, my initial concern um, was I'm actually in Franklin Lakes. I was never notified. Um, I'm the first house on Beach Street um, in Franklin Lakes. Um, so I happened to find out there was someone that had put a notice in my mailbox, which I was grateful for. Um, so that, uh, and there are several other houses on my street as this is um, uh, Franklin Lakes up here, um, have been in the area. My father built the house back in 1962, have been here. I know how wonderful the lake was back in its day and it truly has declined. I am, I was concerned my initial thought was this was going to be a very large building, a huge facility that would be taking up the whole entire land, which would be very upsetting to see, which I was glad to hear that it is much smaller than what I thought. Um, my concern is obviously it is a, a space that needs a little TLC. I'm happy to hear that you would be planning to do something after to convert it to an open space park. I would be um, wanting to have a higher fence um, and try to keep aesthetically pleasing to people that walk there that would be using it. Um, if there is any type of idea don't like the idea of a chain link fence. If there was something a little more natural, um, uh, aesthetically pleasing to the eye um, would be wonderful. Um, when, and another question that I have is, um, when is the anticipated start of this? Um, all right, so let me just, number one, address your question about notification. Um, so, because this did come up with somebody else. So we use, when we did the notifications, we use a standard practice called the 200 foot rule. Um, anytime you want to apply for something, a permit from the, from the DEP, for example, or if you want to go before a zoning board to get a variance for your property, Look. one of the things that you have to do is you have to notify everyone within 200 foot of the property. So that's the criteria. It was just a standard practice that, that we used. Where is Luke? Right here. I need him. He has his name in here instead of mine. Okay. He also yeah. Sorry. Linda, are you still there? I am, yes. Okay, sorry. So that, that's how we that's how we did the notification. It's called the 200 foot rule, and, and that's what we used. And I and, and Rich, correct me if I'm wrong, it wouldn't matter if you were in Franklin Lakes. Wyckoff or Patterson, if you were within 200 yes, feet, you would have gotten notified. Okay. Right, we, do, we just use the standard uh, practice right. for uh, notification. But I, but my, my point was that it's not it's not town border specific. Okay, that's good to know. Um, as far as the fence, we, we've already decided that there will not be a chain link fence because, you know, from everybody I've talked to down there, and I think those of you, you know, you all know who, who, who you are. Uh, the, the, the absolute consensus is no chain link fence. So we determined very quickly that the chain link fence no longer exists in, in our minds. Um, and again, we're gonna use some sort of black, like a black powder coat metal fence. Mm -hmm. um, and that way, and we're gonna hide that again with these gi green giant arborvitaes. Um, they're, they're somewhat deer resistant um, and they don't have invasive roots so we don't have to worry about them ever getting anywhere near any of our, you know, any of the underground stuff. Does that help you a little bit, Linda? It does, yes. I, um, as far as the anticipated start of uh, this? We have, unfortunately, you know, I, I, I own a logistics company and people are there, well, when can we get this done? When can we get that done? We have to get the things that we don't have control over out of the way before we can start discussing that. And right now, we have an approval from the Highlands, from the Highlands Committee or Commission. We do not yet, we're waiting for DEP approval. So once we have a permit for the D from the DEP, then we can start to put together a start date. The plans are, you know, we've got the 
enough of the plans done so that, that we can certainly give you a projected schedule. And maybe, uh, Kathy, if you're still there, if you can collect everybody's email address that's, that's on this call, um, maybe what we can do is we can set up a group email. And as we get information, we can forward it to you. Um, one of the other things that's going to happen is once we have the permit down and we have a schedule, um, I'm going to ask uh, Kevin or Giselle or John Yakimic to come up with a Gantt chart or a timeline schedule of what, what's going to happen and when it's expected to happen. And as we have sewer and water meetings, we will ask Michael to update that, 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 that chart. So you'll be able to go on the, on the borough website and see where we are with any of this. Okay. Okay, anybody else? Yep, hold on one sec. All right, at the second, I'm done. Todd, I unmuted you. Hi, Todd. How you doing? Um, so I have a couple questions. Um, first, I think it's, even though I, I'm not directly affected by these properties, um, I'm, I'm wondering about the cost of this and who is going to be paying for it. Is it coming from grants, from a, a sewer tax for those homes that are affected? Is it just coming out of the Oakland General Fund? So no. where is this being paid for? Okay, so Oakland, the, the, all these houses that are in Oakland that, have, that are on this sewer system uh, pay into a sewer utility. We have a sewer utility in town and these homes all pay into it. So everything that's involved with the operation, upkeep, and upgrade uh, is charged off to those homes that are within the sewer utility. Um, the reality is, is that doing this, what we're about to do, is going to be a much cheaper and much more sustainable option than trying to replace these facilities that are now very outdated. And, and quite frankly, when this whole thing was all put together, I, I don't know when the houses were built, but you know, this was all thrown together as, as kind of a, a necessary afterthought. I think these houses were built with the idea of putting in septic systems like the rest of the town, except they won't work on these properties. So you know, that, that's how we got involved with putting a you know, pump station on the top part of a small pump station up on Lakeview. And then we've got a pump station up by um, was it Tuscarora. And then we've got the actual treatment plant over, at, uh, over on the um, um, yeah, where, where you know the Skyview. I'm sorry. So these were all put together very haphazardly, and the cost to replace these things and then replace them again in 10, 12 years, when their lifespan is up, is a very expensive proposition. More importantly, the regulations, the DEP, as the DEP continues to go through regulatory cycles, you know they don't make it easier to maintain and operate these plants they make it much more stringent. And the more stringent they make it, the more expensive it gets. This is actually a significantly cheaper option for all of those people. And then quite frankly, you know, as we move forward, anybody who does tie into the sewer will become part of the sewer utility. And, and obviously the more people that share the cost, the more the cost per person drops down. Okay, so that, that takes me to my next question. So you mentioned that the, uh... The only people that are going to be uh, that that are going to have the infrastructure are directly adjacent or in front of this. But is the is the pump station built with the capacity in mind for the future for additional connections, maybe over where I live, or is this pump station just for uh, size for those homes and that's it? First question: Where do you live? I live on Lakeshore Drive. On Lakeshore Drive. Yeah, on the on the high side in the corner by 287 on Lakeshore, off of Powder Mill. Kevin, is that, is, that, is that in the draft uh, sewer service area? No, it's no, it's it's on the other side of two hundred two. Um, I don't think so. Then the the answer is that um, we've done global planning uh, of uh, of the whole system, and the 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 big picture is there's there's another document called a wastewater management plan. And uh, that plan anticipates where uh, pump stations are going to go. 
and they generally follow the streams actually of, in the town. They follow topography. And this particular pump station, we are putting it here because we can't put a pump station further away than this location. The DEP candidly will not allow us to because they want to limit the gravity sewer that, that goes to this location. And in the future where you are, you are tributary to another area that flows down towards 287. And that whole area down there, we anticipate that there will be a pump station in that area uh, in the future. Uh, that's years down the road, probably five, 10 years down the road. And so it requires that, uh, could it physically get here? Yes. Could we swap out the pumps and accommodate the flows from you? Yes, but you'd have to pump up to us. That doesn't make sense. It makes sense to have another pump station to address your area. And we have planned out those areas, but when we refer to what we call phase one, phase one is the decommissioning of three borough owned plants and getting us out of the sewer treatment business. And that's what this does. Phase two is going to be uh, putting in other pump stations in throughout town to service areas like yours. And I'm pleased to say you're in a sewer service area. So that's the, that's the big question, the threshold question. And, uh, and those will be built out on a neighborhood by neighborhood basis. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, do you know where that pump station would be over by me? I'm curious. Yeah, it would well, be. Uh, we're trying to keep this about Huber Lake for right now. Okay. I mean, Todd, I appreciate your question, but we're, we we called this meeting so that we could discuss with the you know with the Huber Lake people, anybody who's interested specifically to this property. We're going to actually have future sewer meetings where we are going to discuss. The other areas that we're going to work on with this, um, you know, we we originally, we obviously, you know, if you've lived in town, Oak has been trying to get sewers for twenty something years. Um, it, it, you know, it was meeting up with a lot of resistance from the Highlands, from the DEP. In short, we 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 broke out this issue of these failing um, or these aging treatment facilities and said that we need to do this. This is an emergency. So that's why this became phase one. And that's what allowed us to get this process for these started. You know, the rest of it is gonna come significantly down the road, but that is what we're working towards. Fair yeah. enough? Fair enough. Anybody else? Yep. Pamela? Hi there, this is Pam. Hi, Pam. I live live right next to where you're proposing to put that pump and so my my uh my uh concern is what is the value my home value going to be will it go down or in re as a result of this have you seen any of that in previous well, places let me let me address that so number one for for us to try and predict what home values are going to do is is at best a guess all right because there are so many other factors involved now that that being said one of the things that tends to affect home values, because people, people who are moving in don't historically want septic systems. Most people like the idea of having sewers. Um, so by virtue of the fact that this main is going to be running down your street, um, you know, you're going to you should receive some benefit financially from people who are buying who say, okay, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Kathy, could you mute whoever's mostly going to yep. be underground and like a little building? Um, I'm sorry, Pamela. So we're going to be you're going to be positioned uniquely in the town as, as to have something that has the infrastructure when we get the permits to do it. So should that add to the value of your house? I, I think it would. Um, having an open space park right next door to your house, would that add to the value of a house? I think everybody would would probably say that, yes, it does. And quite frankly, we're, we're certainly expecting that as we move forward with this and we 
do decommission that hive, that Skyview uh, facility, and we put this pump station online, um, Huber Lake's going to start to be a better body of water, and that should help. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, and just, um, just so I assume that on Lakeside Boulevard, the that boulevard doesn't have uh, have to have anything put into it. You're not going to tear that up, right? That's already there, right? It's just you're going to connect to it. No, there's okay. nothing right now. There's no, there's no nothing in Lakeside Boulevard under the road. So that does have to be added. Ah, uh, Kevin, is, is that, that going to go down the middle? Of, is that going to go down the middle of the road or? Yeah, uh, Ms. Dragish, are you on the north side of the property? Is that where you He's are? He's on the lake side of the property, Kevin. Yeah, but you're you're not on the Wilson Street side. You're north of the property, right? Yeah, north yeah, of the Wilson Street. Yeah, right, right next to the right next to where the pump station's going, where the fence is. She's got a nice nice house with a fence that divides her her fence divides our property. You're, I, I mean. I would I would say it this way. Um, if I were in your situation, I would I would welcome this uh, development for two reasons. Number one, the pump station itself is not something that is uh, a uh, it's an innocuous building. It's an innocuous use, uh, and in fact, the two other pump stations that are being decommissioned exist in people's driveways there this this is 50 feet from your home uh it is it, the the other ones are in people's driveways the other benefit to you would be you would have this gravity sewer line running in front of your home that you could connect to in the future it can't be part of this phase and it, there's a there's a reason for it uh with how the permits are being issued but that is a significant, as Mr. Council President said, uh, low. A significant benefit to your. You've known me for a have, lot of years. It's low. <laughs> to have a to have a gravity sewer in front of your house. If I were in your situation, um, I, I, I don't want to overstate it, but this would be music to my ears. The, 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 okay, so so again, the question though, Kevin, just to help out. Currently, there is no there is there is no infrastructure in lakeside boulevard no we are going to have to dig up the road and put in the main there's going to be a there's going to be a gravity line in front of Ms. dragish's house then the, then the pump station and then south of the pump station um, is going to be a force main uh, a three inch diameter force main that will convey the waste over to essentially to stop and shop in franklin lakes uh, we are we are digging up. We are going to dig up Lakeside Boulevard. We will make it as absolutely painless as possible. Yes. But we are going to have to dig up Lakeside Boulevard in order to put this in. Okay, and that's as part of this six-month construction project. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. Probably yes. Okay. But again, um, you know, we're, you, you're going to always have access to your house. Um, you know, if, if, if maybe it for, for short periods during the day, it might not be, but when they leave at night, you will absolutely have access to your property. Um, you know, it's just, we're, we're not, it's not, we're not putting one of these big monstrous, you know, 12 inch mains. You know, it's a relatively small line that's gonna go in. They're gonna, they're gonna use a trenching bucket. Kevin, do you know, or Giselle, do you know roughly how deep they're going in, under the road? Uh, it's it's about eight feet deep. It's an eight inch diameter pipe. It's the min that's the right. minimum size uh, for a sewer main uh, per DEP requirements. So eight eight foot for an excavator working in a road is nothing. So you know they 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 should be able to make make pretty good time unless they hit you know rock. All right. Okay. Thanks. I'm going to give other folks a chance to uh, ask questions. Well, if you have any other questions. Up. I'll send you an email this, on my list. This is the time. Ask your question, please. Ronald? Yeah. Is she done? Apparently uh, yeah. she is. Kathy, yeah, Kathy's here down. All right. I live I live across the street from there. And um I 
I don't see any problem with this. I would like though the address of one of the other pump stations just to go by and say, okay, no noise, no smell. I mean, being underground, I don't see any issues with this and that smaller structure, I don't see a problem with it. Um, do you have an address of the other one of the other pump stations that I can do a drive by or? We actually, we actually do if you, uh, you say you live across the street. So if you pull out of your driveway, hang a right. Yeah. You know, go up, go up the street, and then make the right. Um, there's one. Isn't it right? It's on the right hand side, Kevin. I believe. You mean oh, we talk Ramapo Hills Boulevard instead? Oh, no, you have to make stay it on Lakeside. You mean stay on Lakeside? Well, I, I could direct you to one that was built a couple of years ago. That would do be that one. Uh, if you go you have to the an address or not? Yeah, yeah, I could tell you exactly where it is. Uh, if you go to the corner of McCoy Road and and Colonial Road in Franklin Lakes, there is a special needs housing project that is there. Uh, it consists of an equivalent; it's forty units. And if you just simply drive in there and go in the back, you'll see a small fenced-in area, and you just walk over to the fenced-in area and look at it and you'll see the underground pump station and that particular one has the controls outside and there is no shed because they they have no generator for it yeah. and so, the one that well, i'm sorry kevin go ahead and so you could see what the pump station looks like is is it looks like a manhole inside of a uh, of a fenced in yard and mr bialy as he is reacting because uh, he was development. He, he was involved in the building of that affordable housing project that uses that pump station. So oh, we this is that you. brand new one that was just built when you go under two uh, yes. two eight. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. Yes. As yeah. a matter of fact, when you were going up Colonial Road, yeah. if you ever had to stop for traffic or anything, it was Mr. Bialy's fault. <laughs> These guys caused the problem. Uh, so fine. just bear in mind though. The pump yeah. stations up in the cul-de-sac area there? Or? Yeah, if you just drive into the parking lot, you will huh. see a fenced-in area over in the northeast side towards Colonial Road. Just get out of your car. I did it the other day. Go over and just walk right up to it. Now, how often? You said this is only run once a week, this pump? No, no so no. here's what happens. The, the, the generator is a backup. It's an emergency backup generator like you'd have on your house. Right. So those generators sit dormant, but they can't actually sit dormant for extended periods. So once a week, if, uh, do you have a generator at your house or does any, any of your neighbors have one? I have one, yeah. Okay, so you know once a week or so, your generator starts up, it runs for a few minutes, basically tells itself everything is okay, shuts back off. Okay. This is gonna do the same thing, however, um, and if I don't know if Kevin can go back to the schematic of the uh, of the uh, building, I want to just show him how thick the walls are of the shed. And they're actually insulated. They're actually insulated walls, so you're never going to hear this thing fire up. It's and, and no the generator is truck. sized about the same size as as your house generator. It's about the, it's the same thing. If you if you if you kind of look, you'll see it on that on that on that plan view there. You can see the outside dimension of the facility is 16 foot, four inches. Uh, inside a wall is 15 foot. So you've got about 16 inches, that's eight inches on either, on either wall. So you've got concrete, insulation, and concrete. That, that's how dedicated that building is, keeping the sound quiet. I, I don't have any issues. It'll be less noisy than the guys that come and mow the lawn, so. <laughs> yes. And again, it'd be 10 minutes. And now if there's a power failure, then obviously it's going to run until power is restored. Right. Um, then as far as the road goes, so uh, it's going to run the line on the uh, east side or on the lake side? Center of the road. In the middle of the road? Yes. Yeah, so sewer lines are put in the middle. It, it, within a roadway, you try to put certain utilities in certain locations, and sewers are you try to locate them in the center of the road. 
So it'll be phased so that at one point I can go right and go up forest to get out. And the other time I can go left and go out lakeside. When they, when they do this construction again, because it's not, it's not a massively huge, not a massively wide trench. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're going to play it in at night and whatnot. So you can get, so you can get in and out of your house. Okay. You know, you just asphalted that very nicely out there to tear it up. Um, well, that's what we do. And let's, yeah, I hear you. Um, is there any concern that Hoover Lake's going to dry up? I don't know how many gallons per minute you've been putting in there, but that's, there's not a lot of flow into that lake. Well, Huber Lake, Huber lake is spring fed. Okay. Um, and you know, let's not forget, there are, I think I counted 20, something houses that that you know whose backyards are the lake all of those houses have septics all of those septics effluent into huber lake uh, i would venture to say that most of the properties that are in that area that have septics also wind up um, going into huber lake so between those and the spring i'd be surprised i mean some the spring could dry up yes is is are doing this phase one going to have any effect on it? It should not. Okay. Um, and nor would the DEP allow it if they even if they even smelled that it could. Yeah. No, they, I they wouldn't want to have anything to do with this. I know there was a deed restriction on that property. I don't know if that's changed to, to never build on that property, but the, the, well, the I have no issue with. I don't. I don't think it'll be an eyesore. Tell you the truth, if you want to cut down all those pine trees so I don't have to clean up all the needles every year, that would be great for me. So I'm not getting into that argument. I had a bunch of people tell me don't touch the trees. <laughs> so thank you for answering the questions. I, it's our pleasure. Again, I've been in the environmental business. I don't see any issues with this. Um, it's in moving forward, the ability to hook into the sewer should improve. Um, and I know... Uh, Pam there was concerned with, with uh, the value of the property. It, it's not noisy, it's a shed basically there and um, it shouldn't be a big eyesore and probably she won't even barely see it from her house either because that drops off to that elevation. Yes, it does. Off, um, from her property as well. All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anybody and next? iPad user, you're on. Hi, Hello. this is uh, hi, this is Brian Stenick at Wilson Street. Hey, Brian. I had, hi, uh, I had a question about flooding in the field. I mean, my wife, my wife and I have been in Oakland thirty five. Uh, lost you. He re he remuted. Can you unmute him again? Yeah. Brian, you, you you muted yourself. Kathy, can you try it? There you go. I'm trying. He's he's unmuted now. Can you guys hear me? I'm yes. sorry, Brian. Go ahead. Yeah, my wife and I have lived in Oakland a long time. There's been a lot of uh, hurricanes, and every time it rains significantly, that field floods. And I remember in 2000, I think it was 2011, there was Hurricane Irene, and I think in uh, 1999, was. there was Floyd. And that yeah. field got totally submerged in water. Now, I guess the, the, uh, the generator, that might cause, uh, if the pump is underground, I don't think that would be an issue. But what about that generator being above ground? That might get totally flooded out. Well, that, that piece of property is listed by FEMA as an NZ zone, which, you know, which means technically it, it, it should not other it won't flood from from it'll flood from the lake i guess if if it got bad enough but it'd be very unlikely irene irene was irene and floyd were two extremely unique events hey kevin um, i think kevin is it yeah. possible that we could put the generator on a stilted uh platform inside the building well the the fact that it's not in a um uh, like like Lou just said it's in an NZ zone means that you are not required to worry about fill within a floodplain. So you can put it as high as you want. You can you can raise that up. 
you could raise the building to be above the elevation of the road. And you could raise, you could stilt the generator like we do in Munaki. It's, right. you could do anything. Here's the thing. We're trying to do this, you know, with as much of an aesthetic eye as we can, because it, it, it's such a great neighborhood that, that we don't, you know, we, we want to make sure we, we contribute to it and we don't detract from it. Um, you know, and I and I know that you and I, Brian, we spoke about the water that came over during Floyd, I believe. Or maybe that was Irene we were talking about at your house. Um, don't forget also, this is on the highest point on the property that we're, we're, we're starting. We're starting there. So we're already at the high point. Down by, down by your house and, and along that little stretch of you know, the lot that belongs to the lake, you know, that's actually the low point of the property. And a lot of that flooding that you saw that came down from Huber Lake, you know, that's because that spillway got overwhelmed and the water came up over and started going, you know, it started basically coming up over Wilson Avenue. And that's what ran down the side of your house. Um, you know, this is way up on top. This is way up on the high side of the property. I, I would tell you that, that the odds of it happening are extremely minimal that, that, that you're going to do any damage to this building or the generator from flooding. And don't forget the generator is not sitting on the ground. It's sitting in the building, you know, on, on short stand. Okay. Now, do you have a, um, do you have a project number for this um, pumping station? Kevin or Giselle, because uh, Brian had been in touch with the DEP and apparently somebody there gave him a project number. Starts with an S. Yeah, Rich. they gave me. Yeah, they gave me a project number is S is in Sam, three four zero four eighteen dash zero three, and I tried to contact David Young, and I haven't heard back from him. If this is the project for this pumping station, Rich the, Dave is the contact on the DEP permit on the on the application apparently for this. The the, the process <laughs> is that. Okay. The, the TWA application plans and specs have not been filed at this time. They are about to be filed. Um, we will have a set of plans and specs on, on uh, record with the, the borough clerk because that's one of the requirements when you make the filing. Um, they, the DEP then has 30 days to declare it complete. And at that point, it secures a project number or an application number and you can certainly reference it at that time. I don't know what numbers you're referring to now, but there is no application for this project until such time as they receive the TWA uh, submission. Okay, so maybe this project is a, another project then. Possibly. Yeah, you're, yeah. This we yeah. we can show you the plans are not. You know, it's an open book. They're they're going to be public record when we send them in and. Uh, we've already there's 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 no secrets here. Okay, well, I'll, I'll try and contact that that woman back from the you know the DEP and also find out. I, I I was just curious. I wasn't sure if that was the project numbers. So you're saying you don't even have a project number yet? No, we have, we we're going to make a formal filing within the next two couple of weeks. But uh, plans are done, but we just haven't made the submission. Okay, we're, we're doing Brian. We're doing all this. We're you know we're having this meeting. At a very preliminary stage, because we want to keep everybody, you know, well in the loop. And if we have to make, you know, modifications like the fence, better to do it now than after we've done everything. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next, Kevin O'Brien. Hi, Kevin. How's everybody? Good. Thank you. How are you? Good. 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 So I guess it's a question for Kevin Boswell, but uh, we were talking about with or without a shed. Uh, am I assuming that uh, this cannot be done without a shed totally underground? Is, is it because of the generator? The shed uh, causes be, the generator. Yeah, it could be done without a shed, but the, the generator and the controls uh, are exposed to the elements and you're not really doing anything uh, uh, Aesthetically, you're still going to have a generator and the controls, and the shed allows it to be covered and kept out of the elements. And you yeah, still, so. and, and Kevin, you'd still have a fence. Understood. Yeah. On the side yeah, of the, the fence, you have a change. 
That's exactly what you have over in Franklin Lakes at that special needs housing project. Yeah, I, was, I was wondering if the generator could be below ground level, but uh, no, it cannot possible. be below ground. It's got a, it, it, you know, it's an engine. It's got to breathe. Sure. You'll, you'll see what it looks like without a shed over at, in Franklin Lakes. That's exactly what you have there. I guess my second question is the monitoring. Is that done? You said done weekly. Does that require daily. a vehicle? Daily. Can that yeah. be done remotely? No. Well, what has to happen, it, there's, there's reporting that has to happen uh, with an operator. The operator has to go there on a daily basis and inspect the wet well just to make sure that there's nothing caught up in the trash racks that could affect the proper operation then that person has to write that in a log and then he leaves, uh, he or she leaves. Uh, but that log must be kept on site and available for inspection by the DEP when they make their inspections several times a year. So, and if you don't, there are fines that are issued. So it's a very rigid protocol that they must follow. Yeah, this is not, they're not letting us throw this up and then walk away. Okay, all right. All right. I'll yield the Anything floor else? to others. Next. Thank you, Kevin. iPhone user. Hi. Yes, this is Kelly. I live in Franklin Lakes and I also wasn't notified. I guess I'm not within the 200 feet. I just want to confirm first and then I have a couple of questions. Did you say since my email is now um, in your system that I'll be notified of anything that happens in the future? Um, I, as long as Kathy can capture it, I will be happy to. I don't think I don't see any there's no problem with that. You're, you're, you're a neighbor. So, and this, you know, you're involved here. So absolutely. Okay, great. Um, two questions now. I live on Forest Street. Does this mean anything is going to happen as far as sewers on Forest Street or no? That's, that's a Franklin Lakes question that we can't answer. And, and again, this meeting is really strictly about the Huber Lake property because, you know, the, those, the residents and stakeholders, as it were, asked for it about it but i think that's that's a question for franklin lakes kevin yeah uh, i'm i'm just i gotta get to the one uh and kevin's also the engineer for franklin lakes so it helps yeah okay yeah. so forest street is between lincoln and beach and at the intersection of forest and lakeside there will be a gravity sewer um, the way the process, the collection system build out works is you go to that neighborhood and you do a poll. And then if a certain percentage to be determined by the mayor and council uh, agree that they want to have sewers and they say, we'll fund this neighborhood, Forest Street, then it's done. And, uh, and that does not necessarily stop at the town line. It could also extend in Franklin Lakes. There's nothing that would preclude an Oakland property from going into Franklin Lakes, which is exactly what we have here, or a Franklin Lakes property from going into an Oakland uh, uh, system, which is what you're referring to. So that is not a pro prohibited thing, but it is something that just needs to be coordinated between the two towns. Okay. And did you... Did you say you take a survey on the street and then whichever homeowners want to do it, they pay for it or a certain percentage of homeowners have to agree to even dig up the street? Like, what do you, do you mean by that? The way it normally works is there's a percentage that let's say the council says that if more than 60% of the people who live on, the, on that street agree that they want to do it, then what happens is they do a local assessment. They go in. And they say, okay, if this thing costs $100,000 and there are 10 people involved, then each of those 10 residents uh, would be assessed $10,000 over a certain period of time, let's say 10 years. Uh, so it's $1,000 a year uh, uh, would be added to your tax bill. And that's the way an assessment works. So the question normally is, is that, do you stop it at the town line or go further? And in this case, more people makes the project more um, approachable. It makes it oh, less, sure. yeah, it's, it makes it cost less per, per unit. <clears throat> so that's typically the way it's done. 
uh, we represent a, a bunch of towns and and uh, Giselle and I have done what we refer to as the dog and pony show many times in Franklin Lakes uh, for the neighborhoods. And uh, we tell them what it will cost each individual homeowner, that's the estimate. And then that, that community decides whether or not they would support going forward with the build out of the collection system for that neighborhood. Okay, and as far as streets, something like on the radar for the near future, or you're just talking in general that it's something that can happen at any point down the road? Well, phase I, three. yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, Kevin, I just point out that, uh, you know, phase one, which we mentioned is the decommissioning of the existing sewage treatment plants. Uh, what we're terming phase two is really focused on the downtown area. Uh, and for the most part, uh, expansion into the residential areas that would become part of the sewer service area uh, would be accomplished in phase three. Well, and we're what's gonna, the time? We're going to address this stuff at a, at a different meeting because, again, right now I just want to we want to get everybody with questions specific to Huber Lake taken okay. care of. If that's okay. Yeah, so, and then one more question then about this. Yeah. You talked about a park. Is it a guaranteed park? And do you know a date? And can you show us a picture? Okay, so is it a guaranteed park? Nothing is a guarantee in life. Um, there is no picture because this, this, this whole concept of doing a park literally spun out of John Kimmick and I standing on Wilson Avenue at the little footbridge there, talking with um, um, Colleen O'Keefe and Barbara, I can't think of her last name right now. Um, and one of them happened to say to us, what are we doing with the property after we're done doing the construction and we say, well, we're going to fix it up and make, you know, we'll put everything back. And one of them said to me, what about a park? And I thought that was a great idea. So like I said, I called the environmental commission. She lives on the top of Huber Lake. And so, you know, the plan is to make an open space park out of it. Um, there is no design yet. It's, it's so early in the, in the planning stage of that. Um, so, no, but we're gonna we're gonna try and make it something that the town can be proud of, that you guys can use. Okay, that's great. I think a park is a wonderful idea, and it makes having, you know, that whole system put in a lot easier for I think at least my family to accept because we would definitely use the park. And and just so everybody knows, the idea of the park um, is going to be done. Uh, they're going to seek grants to do it, so we're not using any public money. Uh, to create the park. Okay, thank you. Th those were Hopefully. all my questions. Thank you. Hopefully. Okay, next. Matt Shook. Hi, Matt. Hi, how you doing? Still here, still breathing. Got all my guitars in the office though, so that's always good. Yeah, that's nice. I like the one behind your head there. <laughs> um, I, had, I had two two questions. Um, the So once once the line's in, and the, the sewer line down the road, um, I appreciated the information about how hookup to sewer normally works. Is that description that you just gave the case in Oakland as well as Franklin Lakes? So, you know, would it be a poll here for all these streets that depending on how many of us wanted, that would determine whether sewer hookup came? No, it's a little, it's actually a little different here because like, as I told you in the beginning, you guys, you know, because I know you're you're at one thirty, right? Yeah, yeah. So, like your house, you're going to have this main running right past your house already, right? So when they're talking about doing the polling, you know, this is when when they start to decide: do we put in a main? Um, you know, are we going to put the infrastructure to accommodate sewering these houses? You know, you know this this is the unique advantage that that the houses along the Lakeside Boulevard are going to have. You're already, you already are going to have the infrastructure there. So the only decision is going to be once, when, and if we get the proper approvals, um, do you decide that you want to hook up to it or not? So, all right. So then it, that the main will be there is the uh, sort of, you know, um, obviously you're saying it's not a mandatory thing. Is that in I don't know that it's, or is I'm that sorry. just, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, um, you know, we don't know that it's not going to be mandatory. I do not believe that it will be. Okay. Um, 
you know, th this is one of those things. We do not have the ultimate control over that. We've got, you know, the Highlands Commission and we've got the New Jersey DEP. Right. Um, and then we've got uh, uh, Kevin. We were, uh, Kevin and I were just talking about uh, it. Northwest Bergen. Thank Bergen. you. That's it. Northwest Bergen. Yeah. Okay. So that, that I was reading the, the management plan and, and noting that the plan for Main Street within 36 months, all the businesses are required to connect to that sewer and wondering, given the fact that we're well over our septic allotment in this town for the Highlands, if there's going to be pressure down the road to pull us all off of our septics to help, you know, get us under the limit where we are. And, well, and if, there, if there's a way, you know, because like you're saying, it is going to be better for the water quality to hook up to that sewer in the long term, but it's expensive, you know, to cap the septic and do all that. It, is, is that then a pool like the other ones where we would pool together to, or would we then be sort of stuck with both the capping the septic and the hookup to the sewer costs? All right. So the, 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 things, that, the things that involve your property would be your responsibility. So, you know, capping your septic, that's on you. Um, connecting to the sewer, that's on you. Um, you know, the actual labor to do it. Now, there is usually a, a sewer utility connection fee. Um, and I guess they run about what, $5,000 a house, Kevin? Yes. So these, so, so the sewer utility in this case, the Oakland sewer utility might have a connection fee of say 5,000, um, you know, could we see if, it, if we have to talk to our CFO and maybe 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 we could reduce it? I don't know yet, um, but you know that you know that stuff is all on you. The, the the shared costs are the things that everybody shares: the main, the pump station, the generator for the pump station. These are all these are all things. Remember when you and I started talking? You and I you were asking me about can we fix the lake? And I said, well, we can't. It's private property. And it's not something that really the general populace has realistic access to. This is the same thing. The, the main, everybody, you know, everybody that's in the sewer service area is going to have access to. Mm -hmm. So that's something that can be part of the sewer utility. The line that goes from your house to the main, the, you know, that's, private, that, that's, your, that's your responsibility. And so if... If it does become a, a mandatory hookup for us in the future, I'm just trying to make sure I understand. Any any costs associated with laying the line from the house to the main, as well as our septic, would be on the individual homeowners. Then there's potentially a, a sewer hookup that the town assesses as well on top of that? The sewer utility, but yes. Right, okay. And is there just- I'm sorry that's yeah. not the answer you wanted. Is there another option, you know, regulatory wise that would appease DEP or whoever it is that would allow those of us who have septics to say, you know, do an annual maintenance or, you know, anything to make sure that we're in regulation, but wouldn't necessarily have to pay, you know, a lot to hook up to the sewer if we didn't want to or have the money? Here's the problem, okay? Um, and, and again, you know, I'm, I don't want to get we're getting we're straying a little bit off topic because we're, we're getting well into the future. Mm -hmm. As time goes on, they are making it more and more difficult to have a septic system. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know that there there have been towns that they have mandated that the, I guess uh, Northwest Bergen has mandated that the town requires every three or every five year septic inspections. And if it fails, it's got to be corrected. So, you know, you take, take a house like mine, you know, my, my, sept, I, I, my septic got replaced when I bought the house. Um, you know, I, I, I think they've probably gone through two or three regulatory cycles since then. So, you know, if you have a septic, for example, and you want to sell your house, if I want to sell my house. Um, one of the first things that happens is you, you get an inspection done, the town, the town comes in or a home inspector private will come in and say, well, this septic works, it's great, but it is not current. 
Therefore, it has to be made current before the new owner can get a certificate of occupancy. You know, mm-hmm. they're starting to do the same thing environmentally. They're looking at, you know, well, so people have got old septics. We don't want old septics. Uh, you know, they certainly can, can make the regulations very difficult. That's why the idea of sewers, as painful as it might be initially, in the long run, is financially better for the homeowner um, because that that takes that problem away. And and to your question and to somebody else's question about property values, you know, being being on sewer as opposed to septic is a big win for property values. Okay, so that that, that makes sense. I I if you if you would, if if and when there starts to get word that it's going to become mandatory. <laughs> Some sort of advanced notice would be great, you know. Um, the uh, the only other question I had, and I, I think I think I may know the answer to it, but if well, go ahead, throw it out there. If there's a, uh, you know, for example, say Brian's situation comes true and we have another Irene, and the uh, uh, the uh, generator is gone, and there and it's going to take some period of time to repair or reinstall a new one is there some sort of backup system i mean i know you don't you can't really shut off water running downhill but is there some sort of shut off system or something to keep any sort of sewer overflow from happening in that event that the generator dies well number one is that's a, it's a sealed system you know i mean you, you and i talked about this well you know i think a few times it's a sealed you know pump pumps work on a on a on a, on a sealed, you know, they don't like air. So, you know, the odds of anything actually coming out of a manhole are, are pretty are pretty de minimis. And, you know, again, it's not to say that we couldn't get a portable generator up there right. pretty That's damn cool. quick if we ever had to right. uh, until we got a replacement generator or, or did the repair. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. You know, we're not going to let, it's not going to be allowed to, if the, if the generator is not functioning and there is no electricity, that condition will not be allowed to languish, believe me. Mm-hmm. All right, thanks, that was it for me, appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Next. Trying to unmute Kathy's iPad. But you're Kathy. No, it's not me. No. Hi, Kathy. Okay, let me go to Greg. Greg? Hello. Yep, can you hear me? I have two questions. Uh, yes. Hi, Skip. Two questions for you. Um, I have a question. The first. Oh, I, I think Kathy uh, is unmuted now. Skip, can you hang on one second? I yield, I yield to Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kathy. We have to unmute Kathy again. Okay. How about that? There you go. Hi, Kathy. Me? Okay. So before you said we were going off topic, talking about getting our septics decommissioned and hooking up to the sewer line, I've been there a long time. I don't have $20,000 to decommission a septic and hook up to the sewer line. I would hope that the council would get something in writing, maybe grandfather some of us who've lived there for a long time, that we wouldn't necessarily have to hook up or to make some provisions to help us pay for that. I find it extremely disappointing. We didn't ask for this pumping station. We didn't ask for those treatment stations to, you know, for whatever happened being old, nobody caring for them, watching them, whatever the case may be. And now we're going to be required to pay for something we didn't ask for that has to be put there because of a septic issue. So I would really like you, not right now, but to consider grandfathering something in for those of us who've been there. Give us five years, give us 10 years, give us 50 years. Because I find it very unfair. Just because we live where we live, we will have to hook up. Kathy, okay, so number one, you know, the number one is it's not the decision of the borough of Oakland. These are going to be, you know, state regulatory or county regulatory agencies. That's number one. Number two, you know, these are also agencies 
that work painfully slow. Nothing is going to happen in the next two, three, five, I would, I would guess even 10 years at best. And even then, you know, if, 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 if some decision is made, if the DEP says, or the Highland says, we don't want septics anymore, period, you know, that's going to be a demonstratively long phase out. Nothing happens in, in a matter of minutes with this. But you understand my concern, and I would just hope I the do. council would take I do, but it's not, again, this would not be our decision. This is, this is, you know, this is Northwest Bergen I understand. Us that you have to do this. I understand, but you are representing us. So I would expect you would hold our wishes and, and protect us as well. I'd like to think that we do that now. Um, we're not, I mean, we're not going to abandon, we're not looking to abandon anybody. Um, and, and by virtue of this system being there does not mean that any of this, that any of, any of that kind of thing is going to happen. You know, it, 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 we're talking in terms of septic systems, just like everything else, you know, become harder and harder to have under under increasingly more severe regulatory rules and as that happens you know there listen there may come a time when i have to go replace my septic just because you know the the, the highlands or, or northwest bourbon or whoever says hey you know you, your septic was put in in whatever year it's no longer it's not compliant i understand and that's not that's not my concern. I would just hope the mayor and council would take in consideration to help protect us as well. Always, oh, okay. that's our job. Understood. That's, that, that's 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 what that's what the three of us that are on this call. That's part of our responsibility and what we got elected to do. I, I, Thank I, you. If I, if I if I may just add a couple of comments. Um, uh, Kathy, I'm sorry to call you by your first name, but that's the only name I know. That's fine. That's perfect. You, you can call me um, Mrs. iPad. The, the, the mayor and council right, have done a lot uh, to protect the interests of, of the residents of Oakland. They, they opted in to the regional master plan of the, high, Bergen, of the Highlands Council. And when the Highlands started to ask them to do certain things relating to adopting a septic management ordinance, they not only told them no, but they withdrew from plan conformance in order to secure the wastewater management plan outside of having conformance. Then when the septic management ordinance, what you're referring to is, is referred to as a septic management ordinance. Then when a sample septic management ordinance was provided to the borough, they not only refused to adopt it, um, uh, in its current form, they refused to adopt it at all unless there was an approval of a wastewater management plan can, concurrent with that. The, 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 the mayor and council have been your advocate for exactly what you're referring to. I could tell you we've been involved for the last three or four years. At every step of the way, they've been very clear with both the DEP and the Highlands Council that they're not going to do something that financially is not in the best interest of the residents uh, along the lines of exactly what you're talking about. They, they, have, they have turned down the DEP on multiple requests and to get it right. I, I can assure you of that. What do Thank you, you so much. Thank you, Kathy. Greg Van Wert. Hi, Greg. Skip, what's up? Hi, hi, Lou. I have two questions. Um, the first concerns the um, size of the fenced area. Um, I understand the pump is going to be in the ground. The pump is going to be outside of the shed. You do need access to it for maintenance reasons. Uh, but that's a huge area of coverage. And I'm, I can't help but wonder uh, why you need to have that much coverage. Um, seems to me it could be smaller. We need maintenance access. Right. Do you need that much maintenance access? 
Well, I think you know part of it is if you get the fence too close to the shed, then you have the risk of kids wanting to climb on the fence and try and get on the roof. So that certainly becomes part of it. Um, we do need 360 degree access to the shed for any reason if we ever have to paint the wall, whatever it is. So, um, and then off to the side, you know, you, you need enough room in there so you can put a man, the you know, the, the, the actual manhole and the manhole cover are not the same size. So what's underground is gonna be bigger than what you see above ground. Um, listen, we don't wanna put up a fence one foot bigger than we have to, cause you know, as well as I do, every foot of fence costs more money. So we're trying, you know, you know, and again, the smaller the footprint, the better. Well, would you take another look at it at least? Sure. I mean, Kevin, you guys can can see if we can. I mean, what, Kevin, I mean, I mean, Skip, what are we are we talking about? You know, a couple inches here and there. Or are you talking about you want it half the size? Oh, it's not what I want. It's what the town needs, and I don't want it to encompass a larger area than is needed. Okay, Kevin, we can look at that, can't we? Okay, second oh. question. Um, concerning the park, I mean, a park can be a lot of things and can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. As you are developing these plans, is it your uh, plan or do you have an interest in involving some of the people who live around that property in the planning of this? Or in providing hundred percent. So number one is I, I, um, I guess you weren't there that day. Um, Ali Fleeson, who is one of the chairs of the Environmental Commission, who is and the Environmental Commission is doing another big park for us down along the Ramapo River, lives at the top of Huber Lake. So she's actually one of your neighbors. Um, none of this, you know, again, as I, I told everybody before, the park is in it's absolute infancy stages. It was just, I was having a conversation actually right in front of your house with people. Somebody there mentioned it. And so we want everybody involved. It's, it's fine. It's, it's going to be your park. And we could put it on the website or something or maybe, maybe create a, Michael, I don't know if Michael, Michael, are you still with us? I am. I mean, maybe we can create a the Huber Lake Park web web page on the website or something. Okay. I'm sure I'm not saying it properly, but okay. Yeah, certainly. Thank you. No problem. Anything else? Eric oh, Nagel. Wait, Greg. I'm sorry. Before I forget, yes. Skip. We are working on the uh, yeah. on the um, tile yeah. search. I have not heard back from the borough attorney on when it should be completed, though. I'll uh, I'll be up there over the weekend, and we can talk about that. Okay, cool. I'm around. Uh, next, Erica Nagel. Hi, all. Um, uh, thanks so much for having this meeting. I really appreciate all the information and the chance to ask questions. And it's, no, it's, been really it's our pleasure. This is what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah, it's really much appreciated. Um, oh, so you. my question. Uh, I know there are different opinions on the value of the trees that line the property. Um, uh, I'm in the pro tree <laughs> camp, I guess. Um, and I'm curious, uh, you said that it seems unlikely that any trees would need to come down, that maybe only one yeah. and some trimming. I guess my question is because it's an underground system, won't that disrupt the root systems and aren't there dangers to the trees um, with the way that this whole uh operation is built all right so number one where you give you i don't know kevin can we go back to the aerial view for a second yeah there it is all right so if you see where the building is the brown the brown square there Mm -hmm. And you look over going up Lakeside Boulevard, you know, that, that open area is where the pump station is going to go. 
Um, as a rule for my conversations with my friend, friend Ed Clark from the Shade Tree Commission, who is uh, my, my tree guru, uh, as a rule, tree roots tend to stay within the canopy. Um, so I do not believe that we are gonna be involving any of the root systems of those trees. Okay. So that was my only question. Okay, well that was that was relatively easy. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Yep. Uh, let's see here. Sarah Mitchell. Hi. Sarah. Hi. Do you hear me? Hi, Sarah. How yeah. are you? I'm good. Thank you. So you know, um, I live in Cayuga. So I'm affected by the old pumping station as along with other properties here. And I guess my question is that well, you're going to have to try that again. We lost you. Hello? Hi, do you hear me? Now I do. Go ahead. OK, sorry. So. Since the proposal um, has been submitted, and I guess you guys are talking about it, or maybe not submitted to the state yet, I guess my question is, do you have an exact would cost with the new pumping station? The project, the, the, the entire project, the decommissioning, the mains, and the pump station is, uh, was it 4 million, Kevin, give or take? At all costs, yeah, total project yeah. costs, yes. About $4 million. The construction, okay. co construction costs would probably be on the order of uh, $3 million. And by the way, significantly less than trying to replace those three facilities. Right. So I think my question is, since I am currently paying approximately 600 quarterly for my sewers, my question is, since you know it's going to be about three to four million dollars for this project, how much is it going to cost us for each homeowner in our area? Rich, this is a you question. Uh, yeah, and I can tell you, and I, I think we've kind of tried to address this a little bit uh, in the past. Based on what we've seen so far on what Northwest Bergen charges, uh, there should be o an overall rate reduction, but as far as how much that's going to be at this point, uh, those final numbers still need to be determined. So I'd be a little reluctant to hazard a guess at this point, uh, you know, and throw something out there publicly. And, and just, just to add to that, you know, if this was going to cost more, we would have looked at something different. Th this, is, this is the most cost effective option, you know, for the residents. Believe me, it's not the easiest. Right, Kevin? It's this, this <laughs> the continuing the continuing cost of, of uh, doing this versus re replacing the sewer plant. Um, yeah. The sewer plant would cost slightly more, but the operational cost of operating right. a sewer plant is much higher than the pump station. So you're getting you're getting out of the sewer plant business. Uh, and that's where the savings is. Okay. Ronald? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just wanted to clarify about the flooding. I've been there 37 years. Floyd never breached that property. And Irene <clears throat> came up to about where your building is. Um, most of it was, as you said, it was fine until... It couldn't handle going over the dam, so it swept through the property north of there. But most of it, um, it barely got to, it didn't even get to the road, lakeside. So right. you might be under a couple inches there, but that was an extreme weather event. Um, so over the 37 years, that was the only thing I saw. Thank you. And, and quite frankly, you know, at the time that, 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 that Irene hit, none of us knows what, what condition the... Uh, you know, whether there was anything caught in the spillway, because that could have caused the spillway to get overwhelmed also. 
Right, and they've and done the construction on the dam at that time. And it sounded, sounded like my understanding anyway is just because you've got the sewer hookup isn't making us be forced to hook up to the sewer. It would only be an event where the DEP does. So a lot of people- well, we're, we're not, no, we are not going to do it. Right. We're not gonna, we're not gonna hold a gun to anybody's head and say, this is what you have to do. Right, that, that I just wanted to clarify because that- And, and, and as, as Kevin re reminded us, we are going to fight vehemently as much as we can to, to prevent somebody from forcing anybody to do anything because personally i don't like it yeah okay thanks okay mm -hmm. anybody else yep uh linda hi yes um just uh with circling back with the roads being closed will we be notified prior to the roads being closed absolutely <laughs> you, you are going to be yeah. we're going to notify everybody anytime we do anything that may impact um your living situation and, and, and by the way just just among other things prior to prior to work being done in that road you're going to start to see, you know forgetting even if we forget to send out an email you're still going to see advanced construction signs up and how, when you mention Lakeside Boulevard, is it the entire length then going down towards Manitou School? Like how, or is it just going through to, to the lake? Uh, maybe Kevin put up slide four again. I'm, I'm sorry, what was the question? As far as the roads being ripped up for the the piping to go down is yeah, it the entire length of lakeside well, boulevard that then wraps around and goes up towards manitou school or is it just lakeside to the end of it's it's there's another slide decommit that oh, plan okay all right You're so trying to get that slide up weren't you yes all right so so the plan this plan is as three components. It has the gravity line, which is the red line mm -hmm. that will allow for the decommissioning of Skyview Highbrook sanitary treatment plant plus the two pump stations that go there. There's also a decommissioning of Chapel Hill sanitary treatment plant, which services 24 homes. Um, there's a force main that's going to come over from that for those 24 homes, and they're going to tie into this pump station. Uh, so there's there's the uh, the flow from that small neighborhood up there. Yep. Those two neighborhoods will then be go to this pump station, and then the yellow line will send it over to Franklin Lakes by the stop and shop. So the question you just asked was how far up. Ramapo, uh, Lakeside Boulevard, and then um, and and then further on up the road to uh, to uh, Ramapo Hills Boulevard. Does it go? It goes up just south of Hiawatha. Okay. And that's where the gravity lines, because as you can see, there's something we call the Skyview Pump Station. It's going up far enough to pick up that pump station by gravity and, and then every and then everything flows down so basically every every house that doesn't have sewer right now that is where that red line is going will now have a gravity line running in front of their house and the yellow line is that potentially going to be ripped up as well or just the red line the gra the, the yellow line and the purple line are going to be going to be three inch force mains. So the way you put a force main in is you use a, a, a specialized machine that just basically, it's like a ditch witch it's a, or a Vermeer wheel, they call it, where it just runs down and cuts a very narrow trench in. You lay the line in 
and you restore the road. So the, the, whole, uh, the whole process is less than a foot wide. The, the, the red section is a legitimate gravity sewer line that you would normally think. Okay. And this is all going to be completed in six months? Yeah, the, the force mains go very fast. Okay. Okay. I mean, we, we took, we did a similar, these force mains, we did uh, the market basket when they went offline and converted their treatment plant into a pump station. We ran a force main from the market basket up into North Halden and we did it in one month. Okay. The force mains are easy. A uh, second question, I know you're live on YouTube. Will this be up so that I can circle back because I will need to jump off? Is this, will- Michael. Yeah, it'll be up on YouTube. Do, yes. How long will it be up for? And is there a name for the video? We'll call it the Huber Lake meeting. Wonderful. <laughs> or we can call it Linda's Huber Lake meeting if you like. No, that's quite all right. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, thank you for joining us. Um, Kathy, Barbara yeah. has a question apparently and can't raise her hand. She, she has her hand raised. We have three more questions to go. Okay, let's, let's answer everybody's questions. Okay, Jonathan? Yes. Hi. Hi. Well, Jonathan uh, is muted again. Hello? There you yes, go. Jonathan, go ahead. I don't know what you heard, but Lou, thank you for your time and for explaining everything in great detail. I live okay. right next to okay. Linda on Beach Street, and we've lived up from the lake my whole life, 37 years now, oh, excuse me, 39 years. So I just had a few questions. I have no problem with the project. I understand it's for a good cause. It needs to be done. Um, is the footbridge on Wilson going to remain there? Will that road ever be reopened do you, out of curiosity? So. Let's, I, I and this is one of those areas when we were talking in advance about what we were going to, you know, about, you know, trying to keep this, this about Huber Lake. We knew it, we would have to have this discussion anyway. So one of the things that's hit that, that we're, we're trying to determine right now is who owns that? Um, you know, apparently there was some stuff done back in the 90s. Um, you know, earlier than that, apparently it belonged, it, we think it belonged to a homeowners association. Um, of all things, I just saw something this morning that said that lot 42, which is the pond and the lake, which may or may not extend underneath the footpath, may belong to um, um, RML. Um, so we're getting a title search done. And once that title search tells us who actually owns the footpath, who actually owns the spillway, then we're gonna to start to put together some kind of plan. Would I like to fix that footpath up if we can, if it's ours? I'd love to, because I think it looks terrible. Agreed. Um, yep. I, I don't, I, I know, I think Skip at some point said something about how it actually got that way. Maybe it was, uh, oh God, somebody told me exactly how it happened back in the 60s or 70s, but, I think Skip called the Checkpoint Charlie. Um, <laughs> gotcha. I would like to say, I do like the idea of a park. The, the grass is used for sporting and recreation. I used to play there as a kid. I think we should continue to have that for our community, both Oakland and Franklin Lakes, It's as we share a border here. Um, we also use the fish. Um, I know that a long time prior to my lifetime, my father was involved in making this lake usable for people. Uh, I heard you mention it's not an openly accessible lake, but we've always used it and it's sort of been a communal area. Uh, anything on that to restore the lake to a little bit of uh, being a little nicer? The problem with the lake, I mean, and again, this is, you know, this, this is, this is the conversation that people don't like to have, but the lake is private property of that. There is no doubt why it's, it's, it's block 5,002 lot 42. And what that encompasses encompasses is without question is Huber Lake, the pond, and I guess about 40 foot of shoreline uh, going towards, you know, go from the bank of the or 30, 40 foot going from the bank of the pond back towards underneath the, uh, the volleyball net. 
Okay. Um, and it's always been borough property that the borough did, the borough cannot spend money to to fix private property. Understood. And is there a way that Franklin Lakes and Oakland could maybe come together on, on helping the park maybe be a, a reality? Well, you know, one of the things that could be done maybe, and again, this is me off the top of my head sitting here with you asking and my, my colleagues all cringing right now. Um, <laughs> but you know what, if, if people want to put together a, a fund drive um, to help generate the money, I'd certainly get behind helping in any way I can. Um, you know, I, we could, you know, we, we, we would want to help, but we just can't, we can't enter into that because I think it's a big number, you know, because number one, you've got, you've got a, you've got a registered dam with the DEP and the, the dam that goes between Huber Lake and the pond, mm -hmm. that's a registered dam. So that's, that's under DEP scrutiny, mm -hmm. you know, which, which becomes a little challenging to say the least. Okay. Um, but you know, again, we can. These are things that we can all, as time goes on, we can all talk about it, and and maybe somebody smarter than me, of which there's probably at least fifteen on this call alone, uh, might come up with a better with with a plan that 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 is fiscally you know feasible for the borough. Fair enough. And I'd just like to then thank the lake owners for allowing us to use our boats in it, ice skate in it. Uh, I always just thought it was uh, part of the town property. We all used it and thank you to them and uh, i'd like to continue to enjoy it for our community and that's all and we, hope, and we hope to make the piece of property next to it a little prettier i hope so yeah thank you for your time everybody no thank you anybody else diane and rich that's all we can close off if you want to listen we can listen hi hi everyone thanks for for having this meeting can you hear me it's our pleasure. yes we yeah. can okay great. thank you for thank you for quote unquote attending <laughs> um, so, so uh, we live on 131 Lakeside Boulevard, um, and um, most of my questions have been answered, but um, you said that the lake is private property, and it's, I don't know, a Crystal First Pack Club, or is incorporated, and it's listed as Wilson Street with that block and lot that you mentioned. Isn't that the same... Um, the same entity that was on the title of that piece of property that you now foreclosed on? Yes. So here's what happens. It's two pieces of property, however. Mm -hmm. So the piece of property that we foreclosed on, um, matter of fact, Kevin, can you put up the, the aerial thing again, if you don't mind? Thank you. you. It's kind of on my side that the lake should be for everyone. No one owns it. They don't maintain it. We all want to use well, it and enjoy it, you know? Right. Fish, it, well, it, he's saying they own it. Someone owns it. Well, not, no, no, Kevin, the, the aerial picture, the other one. I'm saying it's a lot of property that someone owns, and it's not public. Yeah, not that one, the other oh, yeah. one. You put up the aerial of the lot. But it should be. We've oh, always, yeah. used, always ice skate there. Um, you, people used to um, Diane? Yeah. I, there's I, chatter in the Wait a minute. Who is speaking? Kathy, can you, can you, speaking? Kathy, can you move everybody except Diane, please? I'm sorry. Was that my fault? Um, so, Diane, if you, if you are you look, I'm, I'm assuming you have video there, correct? You can see the what we have up on the PowerPoint. Oh, this is yeah. the town whose property is this. So the white line, well, you see that you see the yellow line. So the big white box around the yellow line, that is the property we foreclosed on. Right. If you look towards the pond. That is lot 42. Our property is actually lot. Actually, this says it's lot 37. It's it's lot 38 on every map I looked at. Um, but lot 5002 is that whole piece of shoreline um, and the lake and the pond. Mm -hmm. So that is private property. We do not own that property. Right, but I'm but what. Right, so it's just confusing to me. So, I mean, I know that on our survey, we, we own some land going into the, the lake and then the rest is part of this big block and lot, but, the, but this big block and lot is owned by a private entity yes. that no longer really exists, right? Because we were, you were able to foreclose no, on the we, other piece of property correct. and it's under the same ownership. 
but the pieces of property are separate entities. They're not the same piece of property, they're different property. So we foreclosed on lot 30, uh, it's called here lot 37, but I believe it's actually lot 38. Uh, we foreclosed on that, lot 42 we did not foreclose on. Right. So that's just sort of like hanging out in the, in, yeah, I mean, are they, they're not paying their taxes on it. No, there's no history on that, right? So nobody I can't really speak to it, that. I can't speak to whether they paid the taxes on that because I, I haven't looked at that property or what, what's going on with it from a tax standpoint, I should say. Okay. So um, just to be clear for, for um, the, for the uh, gravity feed, you're going to be put, installing all the, I, I don't know what to call them. It's escaping my mind, but the T's for every house to connect along Lakeside Boulevard and, and up on that gravity feed line. We will, uh, we will design it so that the T's and the laterals are put in and we're hoping the TWA permit will allow that to remain in the design. Okay, and what, what, if it, what if it doesn't? I mean, well, we have to, that's, that's sort of like my, my second question. So um, are we going to have to make the decision to either connect or not to connect at the time that this line is installed? No, absolutely not. That decision, that decision is many, many years down the road. Well, but if, if, if the line is not installed with the T's, then will it become the uh, responsibility of the homeowner to um, fund that cost? The, again, the cost to decommission your septic if you choose to do so, and the cost to run the line um, from a construction standpoint from the property to the main, uh, that is the responsibility of the home. That would be the responsibility of the property owner, as would paying a connection fee to the sewer utility. Right. Um, you know, again, we we are designing the, the main with the with with um oh god with the with the parts we I'm sorry, I forgot the word. The parts we need in order to facilitate putting the T connections in, but mm -hmm. that's part of our plan with the TWA. It has to be approved. They could turn around and say, well, we don't want that right now. Um, in which case we wouldn't do it. The, 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 it makes sense to put them in because mm -hmm. you're ripping up the road once and you put them under the ground and the, and the differential in cost is, is minimal. minimal. Right. But, but, but the, the town has a, uh, a special um, authorization from the DEP to allow for the decommissioning and the sending of the waste, as Councilman Bialy said, over to Waldwick, that only relates to the waste from the existing plants. So to add users, it requires a different process. So we'd like to put the infrastructure in under what we refer to as dry sewers, and then uh, seek the approval so that people like you can connect in the future. Okay. So the, the, the idea is that, that you know, we have this, we have a master plan for, for trying to sewer as much of town as we can. Um, we just, we just, out of necessity, we started to, instead of looking at it globally all at once, we broke it up into, into sort of more, more bite-sized pieces. And this phase one um, was the decommissioning of these aging plants uh, that we have, you know, up, up by Skyview and whatnot, Tuscarora. So, but in order to do that, no matter what, we have to run this main, you know, down Lakeside to Franklin. Um, that's the reason that we have the the um, the pump station installed, or that we're going to install the pump station. But then, the, then the idea is because we have future plans. Obviously, we want to rig the, the the main up in order to be able to accept those future plans. So that's why we're applying for it all at once. But we don't have the, the, the permission from the TWA or from DEP or Highlands to allow residents that are not currently sewered to tie in is years away. Okay. And um, 
once once you put this line down Lakeside Boulevard, are you just going to patch it, or do you have plans to repave the road? Repave Rich, the road. Repave the road. Oh, excellent, excellent. That's part All of the right, plan. thank thank you very much. Thank you for your patience. Oh no, it's it's our pleasure. It's our job. Uh, anybody else? Yep, Barbara. Hello. Hello. Hi, Barbara. Hello. Hi there. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Okay. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, probably went up to see Skyview. Is that the name of the uh, other plant? The one that's up around the corner from you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I believe I saw barbed wire at the top of that thing by the There's fence. There's not going to be barbed wire on, on your facility. That's what I'm at. Why was there barbed wire up there? Because it's a wastewater treatment plant and it's it's someplace that you really have to make sure people don't play around with near. Okay, so that's never going to happen. You are not gonna have barbed wire. Okay. You, you are gonna have a black a black powder coat fence. And so far I have one one I I got one vote from somebody to make it tall. Yeah, that makes sense. Are you you a tall person also? Pardon? You want it tall or short, six foot or eight foot? Well, I think the taller the better because kids are going to try to climb it. Kevin, eight foot fence. That's two to zero. Okay. Okay. That's it. That, that was easy. Yeah. Thank you. Colleen. Hi, Colleen. Hi there. Um, most of my questions have been answered and I guess what I would say is uh, thank you for this meeting and for really working with thank us. Thank you for to asking for it. Yeah, well, I think it was very useful and, um, and very informative and I know that you shared a lot more information even with some residents like myself that had asked. So the, the view of it and the look of it and everything is very helpful and most of my questions have been answered. I guess I would just add, you know, obviously I don't relish the idea of paying anything more. And I don't think I'm in the immediate, you know, hookup no. route. And um, I won't get too concerned about that since my parents have been here for 50 years and been promised source. So I won't worry about that right now. <laughs> um, the park idea, um, is seems to have gathered a lot of interest and I will just say I have a lot more thoughts on that. I know um, Matt um, Shook on the call has been able to talk with a few people or the head of the um, environmental group as well, maybe about Alex. some grants. Um, Alex, another, another grant potential, but I would also throw out to whoever's interested, maybe there can be a, something could be a great Eagle Scout project for someone or, you know, getting other different people that are interested in doing it um, in creative, inexpensive ways that will really help the community. And um, so I, I, I welcome anybody's ideas. I'm happy to join any, you know, group that wants to pursue those. And I do think, you know, a lot of the concerns have been addressed and I'm sure there are, are more around the people who will specifically be experience the pain of construction, et cetera. But for the most part, I feel well, like- No pain, no pain. Right, okay. Um, <laughs> but I do feel like it was able to turn sort of a, um, a a confused process on the part of the late joiners to this, like all of us, I guess this has been in the works and there have been plans about it, but we weren't really um, in the mix and it's turned it into um, much more positive uh, experience and I think the park will be a great addition to that neighborhood. Well, idea? Was that your idea? Remember, I John and I, John and I, I were there with you. So. And... I'll, I'll say yes to that. Um, okay, yeah, so I... Colleen, Colleen is the actual creator of the park idea. Right. Uh, oh, okay, to, park? I... Yes, it's fine. You can name it. You name it, it after my dad. You have no oh. idea how many O'Keefe's live, oh, live on that lake. Yes. Um, but I do appreciate it and I just want to- It's our pleasure. I, and, and I, you know, I, I got to tell you, I, I take responsibility for not having this meeting earlier. Um, you know, we had, we had, a, as I mentioned to Matt, we had a bunch of SOAR meetings, actually two of them, two special SOAR meetings 
it never dawned on me we should actually notify you guys specially. I just we just thought everybody was watching, and I, I didn't. It just didn't dawn on me. So well, thank you for your letter. That I, I do think um, it's it's interesting, and I will just say we would never. I would personally never have joined that because I really didn't think it had any impact on my life. And where should you? <laughs> so that was, I agree. That was so for for everyone else on this call, they probably too we're not thinking it had any impact. So again, I think this was helpful and at Thank least you. got everybody talking. It, it was our pleasure. And, we'll, we'll, and we will, you know, my intention is we keep the dialogue going. We keep everybody informed, you know, good, bad, and indifferent. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Colleen. Uh, anybody else, Kat? That's it. That's it. Uh, does anybody from our team want to say anything? Mayor, John, Giselle, Kevin, John? I just want to Great. thank everybody for uh, participating. Your questions were uh, so noted. We appreciate it. You know, you can always contact any of us. Will you have, you know, if you, if you don't know us um, and you don't know our emails, you just go to the website. All our emails are there. It's our last name and then oakland-nj.org. Um, we will answer your questions. We don't always have the answers and we tell you, uh, we'll find out or we ask you to contact our bar administrator or our engineer because I'm not an engineer, so I don't have answers. In fact, I was listening to the engineers today and I thank you, Kevin and John and Giselle for being uh, participating Thanks, and, and being there to answer. And um, you guys are the professionals, but um, thank you to all the residents. And uh, we learned some very, very interesting things and valuable opinions. So thank you. John? That's it. I'm finished. Nelly? Uh, yeah, thanks, Lou. Thank you, Lou, for handling this professionally as you did. And I want to thank all the residents for participating because that's what makes us a town, our residents. And that's what we're all about here. We're all about answering the questions. We're all about making everybody as comfortable as possible with any projects that we undertake. And I thank our professionals, uh, Boswell Incorporated, uh, for their participation as well. And I believe we did, a, uh, as, as we should, a great service for our town and for our residents. Thanks a lot. Okay. Rich, anything you want to add? I just want to thank again everybody for being involved, you know, from Kevin, Giselle, John. John Bialy, Mayor, Rich, and thank all the residents. You guys were great. I, it was good to get all this, get everything out, get everybody understanding what we're doing. You know, you can always reach me. Everybody knows how to get hold of me. And thank you. And thank you, Kathy and Michael, by the way. For, yeah, for, thanks, Kathy and Michael. For being, for being the wizard behind the, behind the curtain. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Thank you again. I know. Have a great weekend.